back for the second talk tonight with Veronique and Alberian. So um, it's your turn, Veronique. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Jean Francois. Once again, thanks for inviting me. And um, I must say that I'm. It's, yeah, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce Mr. Albert Jan Paul tonight. Yeah? All right, correct? Okay, nice. Okay, <laughs> good start. Uh, we practiced this. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> we did a little um, test. Yes. Albert Jan is also known, as you know, as Mr. Dean. <laughs> Uh, he's one of the most important speakers on the subject, of course. He's a famous Dutch uh, type designer born in Amsterdam. Uh, he studied at the KBK in Den Haag uh, with uh, Gerrit Nordzai, whom, of course, you know also. Um, and then he moved to Germany, where he's still living yeah. for. Quite 30 many, years now. Many yeah. years, yeah, yeah now. Uh, and uh, ju so just w when he moved uh, to Germany after his, his studies, sorry, uh, he started working with uh, Scan Graphic and URW. Uh, in 90 1994, he started his, his own studio called Dutch Design. Um, in which he's uh, developing uh, corporate typefaces and uh, creating, uh, he's creating his own typefaces. He also published uh, a book uh, that is uh, very well known called Branding with Type. Uh, the book was published by uh, Adobe Press in 95, and that's also the year when the, the FF Dean typeface was released. Um, uh, in 2004, he started a research on history of uh, constructed typeface, typefaces, uh, and he has become a well-known author and speaker, especially on uh, this subject. In uh, 2007, he decided to support his finding scientifically and started working on his uh, doctoral thesis um, on the history of contracted uh, sans serif typefaces in Germany. Um, and his thesis was uh, tutorized by Gerhard Unger, whom of, co of course you know too. Um, uh, it, and it was in Leiden University. Mm -hmm. And um, there is something here that I, I find very interesting in, um, in um, making a research uh, both in um, a practical way and a theoretical way. So I, I think that's mm -hmm. something I yes. would really mm -hmm. like to Mm -hmm. uh, ask you about, because okay. I think this yeah. is very interesting. We'll, we'll see later. Mm -hmm. um, um, I have to say that this uh, FF Dean typeface was uh, um, not purchased, we said, but uh, is now collected, collected, collected is now in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art. So that's... In New York. Of course, <laughs> thanks. There are so many museums of modern art. Yeah, but <laughs> MoMA yeah. is, yeah. yeah, there is only one. Yeah. Um, uh, so this uh, FF Dean typeface is now in the, in the collection of the MoMA. Um, so Albert Jan will tell us about, mm, tonight, about legibility in, uh, in, the, in the typefaces. Um, and he will tell us about his experience of uh, an expert that um, have been asked to work uh, to redefine the um, standards in um, um, legibility, legibility sorry, in the German typography. Mm -hmm. So as I said, we are very pleased and honored to welcome Albert Jan Po as mm -hmm. our international guests tonight in our Type Paris 2017 sessions. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. 
Thank you very much for this wonderful introduction. I couldn't have done it better. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, nice to be here. It's the first time, uh, it's the second time I speak in France. The first time was in Strasbourg. The second time is now here in Paris, so it's the first time that, that I'm here. Uh, I liked uh, uh, seeing what uh, the students of Thai Paris do. It, I think you do a great job uh, and push typography and typeface design forward you guys here. <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasure being here uh, with you and the students. So, uh, tonight I'm, uh, what I will uh, do is I will talk about legibility and um, yeah, I have, my, my images will not be as colorful uh, as uh, you saw uh, in the talk before. So I hope uh, you will be all, s we, you all stay awake. <laughs> and you uh, will enjoy it uh, anyway. It's a little bit theoretical, but uh, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I hope you, you enjoy it. So uh, this is uh, about legibility and DIN 1450 is, uh, is the German standard on, uh, on legibility. So how should typefaces look like to uh, be legible? And well, we all, uh, as graphic designers, we have this experience that uh, that when we go to a customer and show new designs for a corporate design or for packaging or for a book, uh, whatever it is, magazine, then you also discuss the typefaces that you are think uh, are appropriate. And then sometimes you get in discussions with customers, so why do you take this typeface? And, uh, and then sometimes you say, well, okay, yeah, this is, this is uh, I choose this typeface because uh, when the customer asks, why didn't you use Arial? Hmm? <laughs> because it's for free. <laughs> or uh, then, then say, yeah, I decided to take uh, Garamond or, or whatever, it, whatever it is, uh, Bodoni, Dido, famous French designers. And then, uh, so yeah, and this, this, I choose this typeface because it is more legible than others. It is specially made for reading and you can, and then there is a sheriff's here. And then the customer asks you, what, what, sheriff, sheriff, sheriff? Yes, it's a tiny feet below. Ah, okay. And then you realize that people never saw these before. <laughs> so, and then you run in, may run into discussions with people that say, ah, what, what, hmm? do we need this? Should it be there? It's a little bit funny. Yeah? Sh sh should, shouldn't we take uh, a typeface which is more clear and simple? Because simple and clear is better to read. And uh, yeah. So this is, a, this is a question I also ran into because um, I have to done this research about, uh, about DIN. Uh, and what I started, there's several, several things that, uh, that are called DIN. Um, this, is, uh, this is DIN 1451. This is the typeface for German uh, motorway signage. So all the signage on the motorways in Germany and uh, traffic signs are uh, have letters with DIN. This is, this is, there's a standard for this. It's called DIN 4051. And then there is uh, FFDIN, which is a typeface I made, which is based on this traffic uh, motorway signage uh, typeface. Uh, it started here with, uh, is there a laser pointer here? No? It is just, uh, okay. So I have to use the, the mouse maybe. Does it work? Can I point? Okay. Okay. At, uh, no, 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 not to. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but it's. Ah, it is there. Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, I started with the blue ones here. And this is, uh, the other colors are, uh, are the things that came in later. So, um, yeah, it has been expanding. Uh, ah, there it is. I, yeah. So this is probably, no? Yeah, okay, it's from here and then it's, so this is the most colorful picture this evening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is FFDIN and uh, the motorway signage is still the same. So they didn't uh, use FFDIN for the motorway signage. It's, it's still the same old engineer's uh, typeface. And then there, is, uh, then there is DIN 1450, which is a standard uh, and formally, 
1450 basically told that you have to use uh, the typeface 1451 for all signage that was written in it. And it was a little bit, uh, uh, yeah, the standard tried to cover uh, many things uh, beyond signage. So in fact, it was also for a lot of other things. And in cases where you couldn't use uh, the DIN typeface, you could use Helvetica and uh, Accidents Grotesque and Venus Grotesque, which is not available anymore, but it was still in the standard. And, uh, and it was uh, even up to uh, technical doc documentation, it was re recommended to use sans serifs. And this is, of course, difficult when you work for a company like Siemens or technical uh, engineering uh, people. They want uh, uh, Arial and Helvetica and Futura because they know that there is this standard which prescribes uh, sans serif typefaces. So um, I was a guest at DIN some times because I researched the archives and the library and uh, then they got to know me and at some day uh, uh, the, the phone rang and uh, said yes this is Frau Rosenkranz from DIN and uh, we want to ask you if you can work with us uh, on, on, a new, on the standard because um, the people that suffer from low vision so that they have, have uh, visual disabilities they want to change the standard they want to change the DIN 1450 and uh, we have the feeling that when we leave it up to them, uh, maybe they will do something which is good for them, but maybe not for everybody else in Germany. Yeah? They had this idea from uh, yeah, uh, we will do uh, well, for people with, with very low vision, it is good to have Helvetica medium 16 point uh, <laughs> as a typeface. So they wanted to define this, that this is the best. And uh, yeah, but, but you, but what, what should we do with Helvetica medium 14 point? Uh, that's, uh, the publishers will go bankrupt. The, the newspaper will be this thick. And it is, it is, it is not really practical. So, um, yeah. Uh, so uh, we called in uh, other experts like uh, Indra Kupferschmidt. Uh, she also uh, has been uh, doing lectures here at uh, Type Ferris and some people from Fontshop and others uh, so and then we started to to uh, yeah to think about this what can we do uh, to do a better standard on legibility uh, okay this is the yeah so the first thing is what what we ran into is uh, is things like terms and definitions um, it din is very precise so you cannot just uh, tell things it is more readable or blah 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 you have to prove it, you have to define it, you have to write about it. So there is three levels uh, uh, of looking at things that is recognizability, legibility and readability. And this is how DIN uh, defines it. Uh, we start here with recognizability. That's the quality of individual glyphs which allow them to be grasped and differentiated. Because this is only single letters. And yeah, how can we do this? So we also have to prescribe the preconditions. So we need sufficient lighting. Uh, you can make any typeface, but when the light is off, you don't see it. So because there is no contrast between the typeface and the background. Uh, many, uh, so some, some of you laugh, but there is many peop graphic designers who do black type on a red uh, background. Eh? It is not really, you can take any type you want, but it's not very legible. <laughs> so it is not always the typeface, it's always the, the c second conditions. So you need a sufficient contrast to background, you need a sufficient size, of course, type may not be too small, it cannot be too thin, uh, it cannot be too narrow, and uh, you need uh, the, the openings here, uh, this cannot be too, too, too tight, it needs to be um, a little bit open and you need of course common glyph shapes because you can create the A as you like it but uh, when it doesn't look normal uh, it will be difficult to recognize it. We do, we do not talk about readability here. This is a simple uh, what does the character uh, look like. The second one is uh, then legibility. So that's the quality of a sequence of recognizable characters which allows them to be perceived 
as a whole. So it's not about words. No, we, we do not read words. We read uh, groups of letters uh, as fast as possible. And then, uh, of course, we need the preconditions of, of before. And on top of this, we need a normal or appropriate type, type size. Um, it's a consideration of sorts of text. So what, what is it actually what we are doing? Are we doing signage? Are we doing a book, a magazine that needs different sizes of uh, text uh, typefaces and also different uh, typefaces which are more appropriate for the one or the other thing. Uh, we need normal stroke width, letter width, apertures and shapes. We need uh, normal spacing, of course. Uh, we can do legible characters, but we, when we put them too tight or too wide from each other, the words will become less legible. And we need, of course, uh, minimum line spacing. We cannot put the lines too tight, and we cannot set columns directly against each other. So it also takes in consideration, in, in, in consideration things that are around the letters. And then we will get to readability. <laughs> so, and that's the quality of recognizable characters and legible sequences of characters, which allows information to be understood unambiguously. <laughs> then we talk about uh, readability. So we need sufficient margins. Uh, we need sufficient uh, distance to other design elements. We need semantical grouping. So you know this from typography, you, the things that are the same should look the same. You should find them in the same place and in the same combinations. Uh, when you do a signage system, you cannot change the same sign of the typeface all the time and the colors and, and it, it needs to be consistent for things that, are, that belong together. And uh, we need a good, respectively, functional uh, typographic layout. So maybe uh, when you let me go back here. Recognizability is uh, single letters. Uh, legibility is about typeface design. And readability is about typography. That is more or less the way we look at it. Uh, you can define these things in another way, of course. But this is how the DIN standards uh, define these uh, things. So this is, the, this is what the talk is about. We start. Uh, I start about uh, with telling you a little bit what happens when we are reading. There's, of course, legibility research, which tells us a lot of things. Uh, it's, uh, I mentioned sorts of texts, so what kind of texts are there anyway? Recognizability, optical scaling, what's in the standard, that's the norm. And, of course, the biggest, the most important question is, are there good and bad typefaces, I think, for all of you? And then uh, there's a little bit about research for the future. Um, yeah, Why You're Reading is the title of a book of uh, Gera Unger. So that's why I started with this. This is what we do when we are reading. Uh, we do not read letter by letter. We also not, do not read uh, word by word. We also do not really recognize word shapes. Uh, the eye uh, fix has fix do does fixation points. So it, it looks at this. It focuses and it shifts to uh, up to the right and tries, tries to jump as, uh, to do the jumps as, as fast as possible. And um, only when we have difficulties with the text, when, we do not, when there are words that we are not familiar with, uh, we may jump back and fixate again. And then maybe even we could go into spelling, into reading single letters to say, what, what is written here, or, or when we have spelling mistakes. Now, when straight is an unfamiliar word, we, sh we sometimes go back and uh, then we go forward again. So, the, 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 when you are, 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 are uh, when you are learning to read fast, you, there's these courses to, for fast, for speed reading. The first thing you learn is not to jump back. You should not do this. You just go on, go on, go on, because with most texts. Uh, you will get the idea later on. You don't have to understand everything all the time. This is a, a problem with people that suffer from dyslexia. They are not sure enough about what they read, and then they reread and reread and reread, and they, they, that, then it takes a lot of time, and then they get tired and get confused. Uh, they, they simply uh, take, take too long. This is one of the, the, 
one of the one of the ideas there is many causes of uh, dyslexia and many cures and many things that can be cured but <laughs> it, it is moving forward which brings the most in reading speed so what we try to do is uh, to design typefaces uh, where we do not have to to jump back and but we also have to jump forward and this is difficult but because when the eye fixes uh, here uh, we know we know where to go because the lines are horizontal but uh, we don't know the next point to, to fix. And uh, there is also a part here in between which the eye never records uh, perfectly. We just go over it. So that, that is why uh, type designers a lot look at what happens when, when the image is not sharp. Now you, could, you can draw beautiful curves, but when it doesn't work here, the eye has difficulties to, to move because it wants to be sure that it does everything right. So um, this is the model, and I'm not so, but I'm not that much sure about how right this is, because when you uh, what what uh, the eye jumps, but it records what's what's going on here, and what I think is this model is from times of photography and of film, in which film were single images. But when you look at the video and uh, you, you stop the video, then you will see a blurred image. And only because it is uh, projected at speed, uh, we get the impression that the images are sharp, but they are not. <laughs> so I think that the eye uh, registers this much better than is shown in the picture because it is moving. But nobody has ever looked into it. So this is a thing where, where of which I think we should... Of course, it is good to look at it because the eye is moving. But maybe it is the, the eye works a little bit different than, uh, than we think. It's, I, vision is, is not that easy. Uh, there's many researchers working on this. And uh, there is no, no single theory which explains everything. So uh, the researchers now think that we have two kinds of reading. We have uh, slow and deliberate and reading, uh, and we have fast and pre-attentive reading. So when we, are c when we are familiar with the language and when we are familiar with the subject and when the typeface is uh, legible and typography is good, we keep on reading. And uh, when, we, when we don't know the language, when we uh, have a difficult typeface and when we uh, when we uh, when when texts are complicated, uh, complicated, then we read slow. So we 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 shift from the one to the other. And the idea is that we uh, that we read as fast as possible uh, and and consume text without uh, yeah uh, without thinking too long. This is uh, this may look a little bit strange, but this is exactly what what happens when you drive a car. When you drive a car, you don't think all the time. You don't think, oh, yes, I have to shift the gear, and the gear is here. You look at the gear, and oh, that, 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 do this, and then, oh, no, I forgot to do here. <laughs> so yeah, when you start thinking about these things, you will never get out of Paris. <laughs> you will always stay there. So <laughs> at the Place de la Concorde, it's, it's <laughs> you will never get out of it. Or <laughs> so this is, uh, we, we have to, to be uh, intuitive, uh, typography is is there to allow us to to do do the right decisions with little information, oh, not too fast. So uh, we need some conventions. Not we have to 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 be able to rely on on typefaces. So the the ones on the left are beautiful uh, for 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 many things, but they are unconventional. So this we will never be able to read these things fast because they are strange, uh, no matter how beautiful they are. And as long as things are conventional, when they have serifs or not, it is not a question. It is just uh, normal typefaces. So we will easily read this, and the things we will really have trouble with are, are these things. But it is normal. We, we, do, we do not set a book in ITC Bauhaus. <laughs> so uh, this is not really uh, the big trouble. Um, 
So we need conventions, but uh, designers like to break conventions. <laughs> and sometimes it can be really troublesome. This is for uh, a famous museum in Amsterdam. Uh, this signage was uh, not allowed by the firemen. They said, no, 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 you can do a lot of funny things, but we're not going to talk about this because when there is emergency, people need to find the escalator and they don't like to. Uh, th this idea of, yeah, I make it complicated because then, then the reader is attracted to the message and he will definitely read it and then he will. Uh, this is not going to work here in case of emergency. So this what we are still left with this crap here, but this is uh, luckily not uh, done. <laughs> and this also survived uh, the eyes of the firemen. Uh, but uh, yeah, and, and then you can ask, why? Why is this? Why is, why is this so, so bad here? It is legible letters. Huh? It's, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's, the typeface is a little bit rubbish. It is uh, an interpolation between Arial and Helvetica for people that cannot decide between the two. <laughs> it is called Union. <laughs> What's in a name? So, uh, so it, but it's not bad. No? You can read all the letters, they are legible. But uh, as, as ev everybody that, uh, that has studied graphic design has one time heard of the teacher who was telling, yeah, black and white are exactly th of the same importance. And you see it here, eh? it's the same importance. Uh, so what would happen when we leave out uh, the black here? No, it, is, it starts to get fuzzy. It is, we need the black forms to be able to, to read the white ones. So uh, what will happen when we take them away? It is troublesome. So we cannot do without the forms in the letters and we can also not do without the forms between the letters. So these are part of the, of the words. You cannot just put the letters somewhere. It may be nice for a, for a, lo for a logo type, but uh, for, for reading it is troublesome. Uh, so and that is why this does not work. And that is why this is the gravestone of Dutch design. <laughs> <laughs> and this is also the reason why I keep telling this until it is removed. <laughs> <laughs> but because this is not, uh, I, I, when I compare it wi with, with your design, I think it is, uh, you also ignore the space between the letters, but it is, it is, it is fun and it attracts our eye, and this is nothing special. This is just a, a fucked up S. <laughs> nothing more. It is just, what? Blop. No, it is uh, not uh, the thing we should do. <laughs> so, this that conclusion is in continuous reading for books, magazines, newspapers, we rely on our intuition. And, that is, and that's the reason why we read best what we read most. That, that's how it works. You cannot read any crap. <laughs> but uh, we have to be able to rely on our intuition and then it works. So and rapid, rapid recognition is, works best when typeface design moves within its conventions. That, that's the how it, it works. So things will change, but they will change slowly. Um, when it comes to reading types. So this is about, uh, about legibility. Uh, this, there's a lot of research on legibility and uh, the trouble about research on legibility is that uh, uh, it is done by scientists and uh, in many, many cases they don't ask uh, typeface designers, they don't ask graphic designers, they don't ask typographers, they just do research and they test funny things. So this is uh, legibility of sans serif and serif typefaces in 12 and 14 points with elderly people. This is an important subject to research because elderly people have trouble, uh, have low vision, and they want to, to, to be part of society. They want to read, uh, they, want to, to, they need to understand information, so that's why people do research on it. This is okay. So, but but what, what, do they, what have they tested here? They tested two sizes of serif fonts, uh, and they tested two sizes of uh, sensory fonts. This is 12, and this is 14 point. Um, but in fact, uh, they did not really uh, test uh, serif fonts against sans serif fonts. They tested uh, smaller typefaces against bigger typefaces. Right? This, the, the serif fonts look smaller than the sans serif fonts because it is, this is both 12 points. But the, the type is different on the, on the body size. 
So when size is when you want to do to test size, this is strange because we call this 12 point, but it's not the same size, and we call this both 14 points, but it is not the same size. Uh, of course, you can get so uh, then I don't test the size, but this, this is part of the part of the study is type size. So and then you have to compare things which are the same and different, but not just arbitrary. So they, the first thing is that they asked the people, uh, what typefaces do you prefer? And this is a scientific graph, so it is the wrong way around. It is not, it is not the, bec the bigger the, the better. No? It is, this is the most uh, preferred typeface, which is Arial, of course. Arial is on top. No? And then we see here uh, Verdana, which is also on top. And then we have uh, Georgia times New Roman. And then we again have Verdana, Ariel, Georgia times New Roman. So this is the first thing everybody sees is that the most preferred typeface is Ariel and Verdana, which is not really completely true when you take a close look at the graph. What the people prefer is 14 point, and they prefer, they have a less preference for 12 point. So they do not prefer not, not just prefer sans serif above serif, they prefer bigger typefaces against smaller typefaces. This is, in fact, the message. So um, that's one point. Um, uh, and the other point is that they, uh, that they uh, measured also the reading time. This is again a scientific graph, so it is the wrong way around. <laughs> it is not the, the bigger the better, because the, the longer you need to read uh, a typeface, uh, it's not good. So, so the, this here you have shorter time, and here you have longer time. So the best uh, typeface is here, um, reading typeface is here, the serif uh, typeface in 14 point. Uh, nay, uh, yeah, and here, uh, here it is the here, here the, the in 12 point uh, the sense serif is read a, a little bit faster than the uh, than the than the serif font. So it is this again. It is not only that the 14 point is is read faster. It is also um, that the here the serif uh, the serif point uh, the serif ah. Yeah, the serif typeface reads faster uh, at 14 point than the sans serif does. So this is, uh, this is what I questioned. Uh, is this really fair? And here it turns out uh, that it is important to, to, to judge things at the same size and not just take anything that looks like 14 point because it does not really resemble the size. And how, how is that? Uh, why is that? That is because um, this, this, this looks this looks smaller, but uh, the, uh, that is because the x height is smaller than the x height here. So we should, uh, when you want to really compare this, the x height should be the same. And then you can tell about serifs and non-serifs, because the difference between size are much bigger than the differences between design. Uh, this is the real difference is, is about size here, and it is not about serif or sans serif. So this is not, it's, it's, it's a not, not a qualified research. So what the outcome was this here, 16% larger type reads 7% faster, and 14% serif is read faster than 14 point cent serif, despite of the smaller x height. So the serif typeface reads faster, although it is smaller. So for DIN, uh, we have, we have, we, we, we have uh, one, we, some questions that remain. We don't know, uh, why do elderly people prefer sans serifs even when they read serif faster? Uh, we don't know. <laughs> no, but this, you, you should not just ask people what they think. <laughs> that is, a, a, uh, what do you like? Uh, that's, that is not our profession. Our profession is to find out what is better and not just to think uh, as we like it when, when things get serious. No? When, you, when you have to decide uh, in, in a magazine design, whether typefaces should be green, blue, or red. That's another thing. That's, that's a matter of taste, a matter of fashion. But it, but it, when it comes to reading, uh, we, had, we need other criteria. We cannot just rely on somebody, oh, that's a nice typeface. 
Um, so, uh, and uh, you, you have to take in mind that this research was done on super VGA, S S SVGA screens, which were much poorer than the screens we have now. So the serif typefaces on a VGA screen are, they have, they don't, they don't look like serif typefaces. Eh? They, they are very coarse. And, um, and since we have, uh, sorry, since we have, come on. Si since we have uh, better screens and better rendering, uh, serif typefaces will uh, do much better than, uh, than in the past with these kind of research. So uh, there is another legibility test I want to talk about. This is uh, Professor Dirk Wendt. He is a, a German. He lived, uh, this is the time he did research. This is not the period of his life. <laughs> <laughs> he is still alive and uh, we can still ask him questions and he is still happy to answer the email. Um, so he did this test, uh, Futura against Bodoni, and this is the famous graph that has always been published. And uh, what, what graphic designers see here, it says Futura reads fast. This is, this is a scientific graph, but this is the right way around. So the, mo the higher the better. Eh? So this is, uh, fut uh, what, what graphic designers like to see is that uh, here, Futura reads better uh, than, uh, than Bodoni. But it is not complete, it is, this is not the complete truth. Uh, this, is the, um, this, this is the weight axis. So bold typefaces read much slower than light typefaces. That's, that's the message. It is not, again, it is, we want, he wanted to know about serif against sans serif, but the outcome is about weight. And uh, to have s enough uh, statistical mass, he did the following. He tested four weights of uh, regular, four weights of italic, four weights of regular Futura, and four weights of italic Futura. So, and that, this, that's the thing that does not interest us. Because uh, when you do a book or a, a newspaper or a magazine, you, don't, you do not do the whole thing in italics. We would, we would just do, do it. We, maybe we have here some words and some headlines in italics, but not the complete text. So uh, you shouldn't take it in, the, in these figures. So uh, there is another, uh, here the, 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 the values of upright and italic were summated. And that is, and that is of course uh, the wrong picture. This is, this is the real picture when we separate uh, Roman from italic. So and then we see something else. We see that, the, that, that Bodoni italic is doing a bad job. It is fe read very slow. So this, the figures of Bodoni were, uh, yeah, were much uh, less good than we would expect. And Futura is uh, it, it, it's almost, it's almost the same, except here. So what is really interesting is how come we have this difference. Huh? And we see that Futura Italic uh, scores pretty, pretty well. We even have this here, which is also kind of surprise. Um, but this is, uh, Futura Italic is not, is not what we call real Italic. It is just a Roman typeface. It is slanted, optically corrected, but it is rather wide. It has open uh, counters. It, uh, it is uh, spaced reasonably. So this is something, there's, yeah, there's not much difference in the design of Futura and Futura Italic, and that is why the outcome uh, is almost the same. So we, this was very, very intriguing. And uh, what I did is, uh, so now, now we leave away the Italics, and this is the real outcome that it would interest us as typographers. Still, we want to know why this Futura uh, is so bad. And, uh, this is, this, these are the sheets uh, that Wendt did. This was linotype uh, uh, line caster. So, uh, and Bodoni is very small on the body size and Futura is rather big. And this is Futura light. And when we look at it, it is not really light. We have problems with printing. Unfortunately, this is the only sheet that is left from the test. He printed 100 copies. So maybe the first 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 were too dark. So we don't know what happened here, but this is not definitely, this, this is not a light typeface. It is called a light typeface. And on the other end here, this is called regular, but nobody here in the room would say that this is regular. This, is, this, this was printed by, uh, by a printer which, uh, which he knew, and they were, doing print, they were printing newspaper. 
So this was a linotype uh, setting machine, and it was paper which was not the highest quality. Uh, so it was a little bit it was a little bit difficult. So uh, yeah, you and, and again uh, the the size are the, the size is the same. It is all ten point, but it doesn't look the same. So when size is important, uh, you cannot do this. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is what uh, here. Bodoni rather represents a regular weight. Uh, Bodoni regular is rather heavy. Futura light has a larger excite, and it eats up the interline space. No? The, the, the line spacing is too tight here. It's not good. So uh, this is also not fair uh, to compare this. This is much better because the because the excite is smaller and and the, the the line space is much much better than on the left one. So this is an explanation uh, why. Uh, this turns out so bad here. This is not a matter of design, of, of typeface design. This is a matter of bad typography. So <laughs> what do we research here? We do not research typefaces, but we research typography or bad typography. So what would happen? Uh, this is the question. What would happen if uh, when Bodoni and Futura are read at the same excite? Would the graph change? And we have some, we have some material of what uh, we, we know 17% larger is 7%, 6% uh, reading speed. Uh, and of course, uh, these weights are not, are not the same. Huh? This Futura light and Bodoni light are not the same. So we can put them above each other in the graph, but it is not fair because it is, not, it is just called light, but it is not light. So when I recalculate this, I did this together with Vent, you would get this. This is the, the right weight, and uh, I, I corrected the, the, the reading speed for the size. So this is the hypothe hypothesis. Uh, when we do it the right way, Bodoni would read much, much better than Futura, uh, which is still not the things we would like to research, because there are so many typefaces which read better than Bodoni, and there are so many sensors which of we think that they are better than Futura. So what, what, <laughs> what, what is it about? Huh? So, um, yeah, the outcome is medium and bold typefaces perform worse than normal typefaces. And this is what we needed in the DIN committee. Because the, the people with low vision were telling us, yeah, we need medium and bold typefaces. They have to be strong and big. And said, so, no, it doesn't help. For us, for 70, 80% of the population, it is not an improvement. So it, it, it makes things bad. So we cannot put it in a standard. Uh, you cannot put things in a standard that are better for 7% of the population. When 70% uh, is not satisfied with it, it, nobody will use the standard, or when you use it, people will complain. So, Bodoni um, regular performs, uh, which is the light version, performs better than Futura, but no, we have much more other typefaces, which would, would probably better than Bodoni. So the conclusion, in the, when we talk about standards, we, have to not, we should not talk about the body size. We should also not talk about the capital height. We should uh, talk about the X8. And that is the nominal size for legibility. Um, oh, wrong. So, sorts of texts. Uh, we knew that uh, different texts have different requirements for legibility. Uh, it sounds a little bit funny, but, uh, it's, but we, we have different things here. Uh, this is, uh, we have, uh, this, these are the things that we, we accept. Uh, we, 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 we expect this to be a normal size, which uh, reads fast, and, but we also ex accept that this is smaller, because these are the footnotes. Uh, th you, we will read this slower, normally, when we are a little bit older. When you are 18 years old, uh, you will read this the same speed. <laughs> but when you're a little bit older, maybe 30, 40 years, you will take more time here. But it is not, it is not bad, because it is just a small text, and you don't have to read it. Uh, you can re read the whole book uh, uh, without having to completely to understand everything in the margins. And this, of course, we need this bigger, because it's a headline. Uh, so when we do want, want a headline to be a headline, it has to stand out. Uh, the, uh, it doesn't make sense to make the headlines uh, exactly the same size and put them here, because we will not recognize them. So we have different situations, different sizes, and different uh, reading speeds. 
Um, it's a, where it starts to get important is here. No? That is, uh, so here, uh, the head, when we don't have the headline in the bigger size, uh, it needs to be uh, bolder so that we can distinguish the different kinds of, of text. So we have, uh, even when this is something else, we have the same texts. Uh, we have the reading texts here, and we have the headlines, of course. So you cannot tell, you, you, you cannot say uh, this packaging for, for medicine should uh, be uh, everything in 12 point because we need headlines. And we can also cannot say you're not allowed to use bold typefaces because bold typefaces are, are, are bad readable. Huh? We need bold typefaces because we need, we, need, we need structure. And the same goes for italic. Huh? There, uh, a few years ago there was these help websites where, where clever people were advising about how to do web face website designs were, oh no brother, you used italic typeface and italic is bad for reading, so you have to do redesign to please all the people in the world. <laughs> uh, it's, it is crap. <laughs> of course we need italics and it is not bad when there's here and there a word in italic because it helps us understand, uh, understand what is going on here. Um, and this is also, this is for in DIN, this is reading text. So we do not allow anything smaller than, uh, than nine point or one and a half millimeter X height because this is to be read, under, this is to be understood clearly. It is not good when we take that much time. Uh, this, these are not footnotes, you know. This is important information. So we, we, we can never call this uh, uh, marginal or captions or whatever it is. Um, so, and it's uh, the same as, as, as this here. This is a billboard. Huh? So, uh, this is, of course, different. And, but uh, this we also have a reading text here. And we also have headlines here. And we have also have things like consultation text, footnotes, captions here. You cannot say this is, si this is a sign. So, everything has to be 48 points minimum. Right? How, where, to put, where to put this here? It, it's just not nonsense to prescribe... 48 or 27 uh, or, or big size here. Of course, we need differentiation here as well. Um, and, and this is how it works. For graphic designers, it's always a little bit more complicated. Now I have to do a sign like, like this. Huh? And how, how, what's the size of the typeface? It is very easy. Uh, when you, when no, no, our normal reading distance is 40, 40 centimeters. And for 40 centimeters, we, we do things like 9 point, 10 point, 12 point. So and when we have to read this from 80 centimeters, or, uh, then we have to double the typeface size. That's it. N nothing more. There's no secret about <laughs> what happens when it, the distance is bigger. It is, uh, uh, it is this. It, it, it is not the, the, the size here which is important. It is the size here on the eye. Because here, here we are reading. We are not reading here. We are reading here. So um, this, that means that when I read this in a book, uh, which is maybe 10 point, when I have an information panel uh, uh, like this, uh, then I need this to read uh, the double size. And when it's 40 meters, then it's 100 times as big. That is a, a rule of thumb, but it is quite simple. Uh, so then we get to this thing here. What, what is this? <laughs> Is th this is very, very big. It's like this, yeah? So this, uh, maybe this is display. Not really, yeah? Because uh, when, uh, uh, when we are a little bit further away, then it is smaller. Now, you know, this is, but is this reading text? No, because look how close we are. When we read this sign, it is too late. <laughs> you, you are lucky, because this, this, ro this road was newly built, so there are no cars. But when there are cars, you cannot go, and you want to Zurich, uh, city on the left. It is you never get there. So <laughs> uh, maybe it is like this. Uh, here it is maybe reading text here, but uh, the, uh, but this here, this is maybe even uh, is this this is maybe something like like consultational text. Uh? We know, and the trouble we run into is uh, when we try to read it. We know there is a sign. And we know that there is text on it, and we know that we have to read it. So we will try to read it when we cannot read it. Uh, we, when, this, when we recognize the sign, we will not be able to read it because the type is too small. So this is not the biggest type in the world. It is the smallest. 
But there's nothing smaller than this on the eye. Uh, so this is, uh, even this is not consultational text because caption, captions are read at, at seven point, at six point, it's okay. But this is even worse. No? We, we, we move uh, to, the, to, the, to this with speed. It may rain, it may be foggy, and we still have to read this. So uh, there we decided that this is an extra category. This is signage. This, you cannot use serif typefaces here. It is very, very small. It needs to be spaced uh, a little bit wider. So we have four categories. We have headlines, reading, uh, consultational text, and we have signage text. So that's the four categories uh, we use. Um, this is about how things really work. Recognizability, vision and type size. This is what, uh, what you get or, or what you got when you went to the eye doctor. And when you need glasses, you get these charts with the letters. But in fact, it is not really letters what you're looking at. We as graphic designers think uh, that these are letters, and sometimes you think, well, maybe when the typeface would be more legible, eh, then I wouldn't need glasses. Uh -uh, that's not that's how things work. Eh? You cannot complain to the eye doctor, oh, can I have another typeface? <laughs> no, this is not, it, it, it are letters because of communication what, uh, with the eye doctor. Uh, the eye doctor has to figure out whether you can distinguish when you can, uh, when you can recognize these lines as separate images, as separate elements. So uh, when you cannot recognize this as separate elements, you are in trouble, you need, a gla you need glasses. But you have, to tell, uh, you have to tell whether you can read the characters or not. You have to communicate with the doctor. So you, ca you can tell him, this is an F, this is a Z, this is a B, this is a D. And when you call this a B, then the doctor knows, aha, okay. Yeah? So this is a little bit more accurate than, than this. But the information is the same, because this is five units. Uh, black, white, black, white, black is five. And this is also five. And this is also five. And this is also five. Because black and white are of same importance. You remember? <laughs> so, and this is, this is for children, because children that cannot read can tell you where the gap is. It's up, it's on the left, it's on the right. They don't have to, to, tell, uh, to, to tell the difference between left and right. Now, kids uh, which are three and four years old, they do not know about left and right, but they know where it is. No? They, they can point at this. So, and it's also important for people that do not speak the language. So you can, you can do this with, with people that are uh, familiar to the Chinese script and to India and to Cyrillic and Greek scripts, you can all give them glasses. There is no problem. <laughs> so these are not letters, but of course, it would be interesting to see what would happen if we transfer this to letters, because we are graphic designers. We need to do this. So s suppose this, this is a capital, and suppose we would do an alphabet like this, Maybe it would turn into the most readable alphabet ever. Yeah, it's, it works in, on a very, very small size. So uh, this, we take this capital letter and we put an O next to it. But, and it, this is, of course, a very legible O. Huh? It cannot be more legible. But um, yes, is it really an O? Uh, try to imagine that you have to make an S or an E. It is not possible because this is uh, the same size. But we, we learned that white is the of the same importance as black, so this is too small. So we have to make it a little bit bigger, and that means, uh, or, or an E, no, this is the, the gap here is too, too small. We will never recognize this as a small size. We will not see the difference between this and that at a small size because the gap is too small. So we cannot make uh, this letter, uh, so we have to uh, make it larger. So this, uh, these are not capital letters. Uh, th th it looks like a capital letters, but it tells us something about the lowercase. This, this, is, the, this is the lowercase which, which works. So that means that if we would uh, take this as a design, uh, we should, uh, the lowercase should look like that and not, uh, not the capitals. And that is why, you see, it, you, you, we never have typefaces that are as bold as this. Our normal typefaces are a little bit lighter than, than that one, and the capitals are much bigger. So again, uh, it is the X8 we are talking about, and not the capital height, and not the A centers, and not the D centers, and let alone the body size. Um, of course, uh, the scientists have uh, solved this problem, and now they do this, these rings. 
So, um, so if you're at the eye doctor and you get these, uh, and you're a graphic designer, sometimes we recognize these things better than normal people. So when you really want to be fair to your eyes, ask for these ones. <laughs> Maybe you get uh, uh, one uh, grade more, but it's better for the eyes. <laughs> you don't have to be proud that you recognize this as an E. You, you are luring yourselves uh, into bad glasses and headaches. So ask for this one. <laughs> so this is international standard here for recognizing uh, and for uh, measuring vision. Um, so uh, again, we, we are graphic designers, so we keep talking about typefaces. This is, this is DIN here. So this, is, this exactly adheres uh, to, to the theory. This is how you do a typeface, which the, the openings, this is perfect typeface. It looks ugly, 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 but this is perfect. Uh, it, the, all the gaps are, are big enough. There is no line that is too thin. So also on, a, on, a, on a great distance in very small size, uh, this, this would be the Id almost ideal construction to do it. So, and, and, um, and you see, uh, when you look at the construction grid of the original DIN typeface, it was built on the same grid. It is five units high. <laughs> and of course, these things separate a little bit better when you double the size. And that is why we do not read condense. We, 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 it could have been, uh, we have, we, we are more, we, we, it's easier to separate these things from each other and separate the letters from each other when we have uh, not just one stroke but two strokes of white space. And that is why we read normal typefaces better than condensed typefaces. But that's another subject. Um, so this, this is why, why the engineers think that this is the best typeface ever made. Hmm? It is ugly, but, <laughs> but it, it, it adheres to all, uh, it obeys all the rules. So what is, what, uh, what is now happening in, in real? Uh, when we, we will tr try to translate this uh, to real typeface design now. So this is where things are, are getting a bit more interest. This is the eye chart. And when you look, the eye char look up the eye chart in the internet, you will find, you will find these, these two lines here. The one, this is always green and this is always red. And again, it is scientifically, so it's the wrong, wrong way around as you will see. Um, so this is, uh, this is the, the Snellen table here. This, these are the things. And we are, in fact, we are just measuring the gap here. It is full of letters, but we are measuring the gap. Can I distinguish this gap or not? So this is what we call uh, the vision angle here. So this is the, the very small vision angle. And when the letters are getting bigger, then it is a little bit bigger vision angle. So here is the eye and blah, blah, blah. And these things are normally measured at four meters. Uh, but uh, also uh, in, the, in the past, uh, the, 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 the rooms of the, the doctors were very big and they had a lot of money, but nowadays it is sometimes shorter <laughs> and they measure it with, with these glasses and not anymore the big charts on four meters. So, um, so this, is what th this is what the lines mean here. This is the threshold value for a driver's license and this is the threshold value for glasses. And that means that this is not really the right color, you know? So, um, because it is okay when you read this, but, but you have to be able to, to do this here. Eh? So when you're under the, under, uh, under the, under the, when you can only read this, uh, you are in danger. <laughs> and, and this is the safe zone. <laughs> so in fact, uh, uh, here you will, you will not get a driver license when you do not, uh, when you can only read this. Uh, but when you are here, you don't need glasses anymore. So, and this is scientifically uh, pro uh, fixed. So this is the threshold value for legibility. It is no use to, to make typefaces that are smaller uh, than, uh, than this. And um, this is the threshold value for, for readability. That's the, that's the things we are talking about this. So this should be green and this should be red, I think. So what the eye doctor does, is uh, he tries the different glasses with you and he tries to get you from, from here uh, to there. This is ideal. So this is all, and this is all the eye doctor can do. Uh, this, you, you, you can get them, I can get you to, uh, to here and when your vision is low, maybe he can get you here. But when you're here, uh, and this is the smallest thing you can read, uh, there may, may be a possibility that you will never get here. 
That so uh, this uh, we will try to to make you read smaller letters, but you cannot cure anything uh, when you there is no there are no glasses which can fix this one. <laughs> when you can only read this one, it is too late. You will never get glasses that that's, that's <laughs> ne it is impossible. And that is why you don't get a driver's license because you will never be able to to read uh, the traffic signs uh, in in speed that is fast enough. So this is very simple. This is vision one here. And this is vision 0.7, and this is smaller visions. So here you uh, you have a disability, and here you have poor low vision. So uh, and what what we do with Din is we help people until here. There is no typeface that can cure this. Uh, when 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 you don't have you cannot get classes which help you up to here, we cannot make typefaces for this, <laughs> and we can also not make books. It, it, letter per letter. We, we cannot do anything about it. It's, we cannot, it is not always the typeface that is to blame or us typographers. There are things we cannot help. Uh, so, but the, the funny thing, this, this is one. Um, this is vision one and this is the vision angle in arc minutes. So this is what these, these funny strokes are for. No? We, th we think that it is uh, wrong, uh, wrong, uh, uh, wrong GMA, wrong um, Apostrophe, but it's not a wrong, wrong apostrophe. It is a scientific uh, mark, and uh, when it is a vision angle in arc minutes, it has to be diagonal because the other ones are inches <laughs> and and uh, and foot, and uh, this is not met in. Uh, so this is the the vision angle here is very small. This is one arc minute, and that means that the gap here. This is one arc minute, and this is one sixtieth. Of a, of a degree, so this is what your eye is capable of. It is it is extraordinary. It is astonishing. The resolution here. Uh, we we talk about retina screens, no? but this is so much better. <laughs> this is so much better. This is only one sixtieth of a of a degree, which is projected here, and we still we have an enormously high resolution. So no matter we have HD television and 4K television, it is <laughs> the eye is is much better. So, but that's the numbers, and maybe we are more interested in, in what happens in typography. So, at 40 centimeters reading distance, this is an X height of um, 1.9 uh, millimeter. So, this is, one, this, is, uh, this is almost one millimeter. So, the X height has to be one millimeter. Uh, that sounds very small, but it relates to uh, to a to a five point typeface. A five point five typefaces has an X height of uh, of one millimeter, and uh, here we can even get to three and a half point here and half a millimeter. So that is why we do not like to to read uh, this here. We can recognize it, and th it helps uh, the eye doctor to figure out which glasses we need. But it is not. This is not. We read much bigger typefaces. So that is why this thing is not relevant to typeface design. Otherwise, we would only be reading this here, but you don't, because this is uh, this is ideal. This is the the ideal value, and we can recognize letters with three of three and a half point at 40 centimeter reading distance. But this is of course not what we read. We read nine point. We read ten point. So the things we are reading are much bigger. Uh, so this is what we put in the standard. We say. Uh, this is six point, we rounded it off a little bit, so we advise that nothing be smaller than six point. Um, and this is what we, but, well, how we relate this to typeface design. So this was not the capital, this was the lower case. This is the X height and this is the body size. So now we are going to relate this to, to real typeface design. And then this is what, this is what happens at, at three and a half point here. Uh, here, body size three and a half, but this is what you read. So when we project these next to each other and take the DIN typeface, we see uh, that there is a lot of reading conditions for which this we can we can do with uh, lighter typefaces. We can read lighter typefaces than DIN. Thank God. <laughs> so that is the reason why we can read Arial. <laughs> it is li it is lighter, you know. Yeah, it is lighter than than this. So it, it doesn't. This is not the ideal typeface. That is what comes out. It is ideal for recognition, but it is not, uh, it's not the only thing we can read at normal. This, so this is nine point. But it tells us interesting things. Well, when we take Times New Roman, 
uh, with the thin serifs, uh, which is which is for originally for newspaper printing. These printers were a little bit thicker, but we think that Times New Roman serifs are quite thin, and you see that is that is below the threshold value, and that is why we we think have the feeling that Times New Roman it's a little bit sparkly. It is below the threshold value. We can read it. But it also, I, 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 not too fast now, it also explains why Garamond is perceived as a better reading typeface because the serifs are a little bit thicker and they are above the threshold value. So we have no problem uh, when it comes, we, we have different ways of looking at things and analyzing things and this is just the threshold value. We also have contrast and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but but this, is, this tells us something about the serif width, serif thickness for a nine point typeface. Reading nine point time is not really comfortable when it's printed very good on smooth paper. But um, this is a little bit better. Uh, so when we uh, take now six point and we have Garamond Premier, which has optical sizes, it is a little bit thicker, then we see that this uh, works more or less. Uh, and with times we really get problems in six point. So times is not, it's, it's a good typeface, but at six point we, have, we all have trouble. So uh, you can imagine uh, what happens to Bodoni. <laughs> uh, this is a troublesome typeface. The Bodoni's original typefaces had bigger serifs, thicker serifs in the smaller sizes. But when we only have one size, you cannot use Bodoni for, for a six point typeface. So you, that is why we have optical axis to, to repair uh, this year. And you can say, oh, the service is not so important. But when we take the difference between U and B, it is only this connection. Uh, this, this is, uh, when this is below the threshold value, what's the difference between B and U? Uh, we'll come back on this later with clearer illustrations. But this it tells us, the threshold value tells us why these things are a little bit troublesome. So uh, this was, uh, when size does matter, how can we help small typefaces to perform better? That is, this is something we, we have to think about when we design typefaces. So uh, this is Garamond Premier. Uh, we have all the, 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 the sizes at the same. This is for display, for subhead, for regular, for caption. And this is what it looks like when it's all the same uh, size. So the, the typeface for smaller sizes is thicker. And this is the reason why. Uh, when we get, take the big size, it looks very elegant, super, uh, super elegant, uh, nice typeface. Uh, but when we, uh, uh, but it needs to be thicker when it gets smaller. I, I put these in the wrong order. <laughs> I, I see. I, I left out uh, some. Ah, yeah. This is the short version. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we need to adjust. Uh, we we need to make this thicker to take care that this is perceived as the same thing. So. Um, and this is what uh, this is an easier chart. So this what is happening? Uh, we uh, this is the caption design size for consultational text. How, how what 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 are you doing here? How does it work? There is a, a very s there is all much a lot of details which are larger which are changed, but it can be uh, made to uh, one rule. Uh, the contrasts here are all lower than the contrast here. That's that's the simplest rule. That's the, the thin, the difference between thick and thin is smaller. The difference between the, the smallest counter and the normal counter is smaller. We kept this because it's Garamond and Garamond has a small eye. But <laughs> uh, the difference between X8 and D sender and A sender is smaller. And because this is getting shorter compared to the X8, the capital is also smaller compared to the, to the X8. So all contrasts are reduced. That's the rule of thumb. That's all you have to do when you make a s s typeface for smaller sizes. You reduce the contrast. So stroke contrast is reduced, smaller counters are enlarged, X height is enlarged, A senders and D senders are shortened, or all contrasts are reduced. So what would now happen when we make the typeface even smaller than six point? Remember the signage. That's is, that is, this is what's happening. So, so this is maybe for six points, but what should a signage typeface look like when it is three points? Uh, you know, the, 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 the sign is far away. We see the color and we see the form. We have to read it and we will try it, although it is too small for the eye. So what should it look like? And you can imagine here that this is going to cause us trouble because this is above the threshold value, but this is under the threshold value. So this will glue 
together. So that is why uh, we take away the serifs. It is not, it is not a, a completely new design. It is just the serifs that are in the way on signage. Th that's, that's all, nothing more. No secret science. So for printed matter, the restriction of typefaces to send serifs is neither desirable nor necessary. It is, it is poppycock. <laughs> it is not true that we read serif typefaces, uh, send serif better than serif. It is almost the same. And the same goes for information panels, which do not have to be at large viewing distance. When this motorway sign is, yes. But with this, when it is, is standing, it's, and it's here, like, there's no, no reason. So you cannot make a rule and say, yeah, this is for signage, and all signage has to be sans serif. It is not true, because the reading distance is, is you can make uh, a li the typeface a little bit larger, and then it's OK. So it is difficult to come up with rules. Again higher screen resolution and will uh, have allowed and will still allow for clear improvements in screen representation of quality of serif typefaces. So we did not make exceptions for screens because by the time uh, it is published and I tell you about it, we have the new iPhone. That is, <laughs> the iPhone 8 will have a better resolution than iPhone 6. And uh, even this year, it is, uh, everything is, uh, has higher resolution. So within 10 years, it is nonsensical to talk about this difference in form. Of course, it helps when we hint typefaces properly still. But uh, so what all these things, how, uh, how are we going to put this in a standard? Uh, we have so many, di so many different typefaces, and we don't want to throw them away. Uh, we cannot tell you if you, you may not use these. Huh? But, but why? Because they, they, they all have, have their, their reasons for being here. We use them for, for headlines, for, for changing the meaning, for, for emphasis, for, for, for these things. Of course, it is nice to have uh, these things. But, uh, but this, this is basically, uh, we do not forbid typefaces. We define what we are doing. Because when you look at uh, how we, uh, so we, we all agree that this is display. And we all agree that for a reading a book, we would no, not do it like this. No? We would never choose this typeface for a book. Uh, when you, are, when you are do want to do an artistical statement, then you can do a book in a bold typeface. But uh, b that is maybe to please artists, but not to read a novel or read the newspaper. And also this, it is very thin, super elegant, but you would not do um, the works of, uh, of Voltaire in in Helvetica extra light, you would, you would do it. So there is nothing illegal. This is, this is what we all agree on. So this is, uh, hey, not too fast now. Uh, so this is here for sizes between nine and 12 points. This is everything that is bigger. And these are the typefaces for, for captions. They need to be a little bit sturdier. Hairlines should be a little bit thicker. And here uh, for signage, uh, we have, uh, we have the, the signage text. So. Maybe the biggest thing to do now is, is to take care about these things here. Because uh, you want to use Bodoni for a book, you can. But the footnotes, we will need these optical sizes to, to help people read the footnotes, uh, which have a little bit less good vision uh, than we have. So maybe these typefaces are all there. But these, these are the things uh, which typographers, uh, typeface designers, would do a good thing for society. <laughs> so when we talk about uh, importance of, of, of society to typeface design, it is here. <laughs> here, people will love us for doing this. <laughs> uh, so uh, of course, we also have to look at the width. Huh? We, we, we do not like the condensed ones. So this is, this, is, uh, the, the, this is signage. It's very restricted. And this is text, and this is here. Um, reading text and for display you can do whatever you like. Uh, when you we look at it here, the stroke width, it is uh, similar. So you can, uh, you can still write, do a book in ITC Nova Reze, which I hope you don't. <laughs> but you, you, uh, the DIN norm allows you to do so. And uh, here you can even use, you can even be, uh, uh, use a medium typeface to set a longer text. It is more or less uh, OK. So the, the norm is quite liberal, I think. It allows a lot of variation for the smaller sizes. Um, 
So now the question, are there good and bad typefaces? <laughs> uh, this is, uh, this, is th th this question has been puzzling a lot of, uh, of, of designers as well, uh, also type designers. So uh, not, all desi not all type designers have always tried to, to push the boundaries. No? Uh, some type designers are a little bit more serious. So this is Frutiger here. Uh, Frutiger did the, the metro signage in, in Paris. And, a, and the first uh, uh, edition was o capitals only. Uh, you see them, uh, so all, this, all the older signs with the blue uh, signs and the white sans serif capitals, which are round and not the squarey ones made out of tiles. When you did the simple ones, uh, that, is, uh, that is something like universe, and it was uh, made by, by Frutiger. And then uh, the... the when, when the, then the, 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 the aerop airport de Paris uh, asked him to do uh, a typeface for, for, the, for the airport signage. And then they said, well, we have learned that lowercase is more legible than capitals, so can we now take your universe because it is super typeface? Huh? Uh, and then, fr then Frutiger said, no, no, I don't think that this is good. This is universe and I'm very proud of it. But when it's about legibility, it is maybe not the best. So, and he was thinking about this one here. This was another typeface. Um, I forgot the name, but he t it, f it was not called Frutiger that yet, but now we know it is Frutiger, and that is why I write the name on it. Wasi. And so, huh? Wasi. Wasi, the Wasi alphabet, yes. Uh, because we didn't have Charles de Gaulle then, <laughs> as, as, as the, it's, it's the Wasi uh, uh, airport, which was then very, very modern. So, and he, he said, when you open up these, these, the trouble is here and there and there. And when you, and he, he did this on a copying machine. He didn't have Photoshop. This is 1970s. So he, he did put it on the copying machine and, and put this on the copying machine again and then put this on the copying machine again. So, and this is, this is how he simulated low vision. So, and then you said, here, here you can still read it. And here you can even still guess what is going on and here it is impossible because the spacing is too tight and because these gaps are too small. So it's, he, he in fact is doing the same as, as the optotypes. Uh, you, you, when, the, when it's below the threshold value, we get in trouble and people don't, do not like to read this. So uh, they could, he, could have been, uh, he could have made a lot of money and say, you, you, you buy a universe, no problem. They said, no, 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 I have to design something new. So, um, and this, this, the same goes for the, for the, for the figures, of course. Um, uh, this is the difference between figures and numbers. Uh, this is a number, but the single unit is a figure. That's uh, language. <laughs> so you do, not, you do not design numbers, you, do de you, decide, you, you design figures or numerals, but you do not design numbers. No, numbers is, is done by the typesetter and the typographer. <laughs> We don't have to uh, design this. We, we only have to design the separate elements. So, but what happens is when this is the, the gaps are tending to be small, uh, you get in trouble here. Uh, but of course, at the airport, you want to go to the right gate, you know? <laughs> when there's no difference between 43 and 48, it is not, uh, it is, you will not have a nice day. <laughs> you will miss the plane. So even, it is not only important for letters, it is also of great importance for the, for the figures to be, to have match maximum legibility. So what I did is I simulated this, yeah? I, I, I made the same, I did the same trick uh, in Photoshop as Frutiger did with, with the letters. So, and this is the same filter for everything. So this is the normal typeface, it's Palatino, it is Swift, it is Cecilia, it is Frutiger. Here we have Times, we have something like, I forgot, Candida or something. This is Serifa, this is the, this is FFDIN, I guess. And this is Bodoni, this is Clarendon, this is uh, Glypha, and this is, Rock this, no, this is Rockwell, and this is Glypha, and this is Universe here. So and now I apply the same Photoshop filter to all of them, and you see what, hap what is happening. When the lines are getting, getting too thin, they disappear. So we don't have to talk about things that are below the threshold value. There is no threshold value anymore. <laughs> so this, 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 so and now you see, uh, when we talk about serifs, th the story is not about serifs. Because this here up, this is all very good. 
and this here is all very bad. But here are the typefaces with serifs, and here are the typefaces that, that, that don't have serifs. So the discussion is not about serifs or not having serifs. It is another discussion. It is about contrast. It is when uh, we cannot, uh, we have trouble with hairlines. We have trouble with Didonic typefaces. We have, uh, and the Garald thing here, or the humanist sans serif. Th these are the things that are much better than the things here on the, on the, on the, on below. Even though uh, this is uh, Glufa, it's a perfect typeface, but in small sizes, it is horrible. <laughs> so, uh, and the same is here. This is what happens to Clarendon and things you have here. It's, it's, uh, so, uh, this is what, we ha what happens when we have a little bit more text, you see the same thing. And it's uh, like a G here. It's, uh, things get completely out of, out of hand when we, when we look here uh, below. I have something, and you also see that FFDIN is a little bit better than the Mittelschrift, you see? So small improvements. <laughs> this, the difference between this one and this one is that here the horizontals are 10% ten per, ten thinner than here. And this helps us recognizing some of the character shapes a little bit better. It is only 10%, but it is a, a huge difference in performance. Uh, you see also see the effects of spacing. And when we do spacing too narrow here, uh, it is, uh, we are helpless here. So we need to, to take care that spacing is not too tight for the smaller sizes. So uh, there's, I, there's a few I took out uh, to, to show a little bit details here. Uh, this is uh, Stempel Garamond, a very good design. You see that, the, that, that this is troublesome because it is very small. Uh, this is a little bit better when the eye is bigger. This is Palatino. Palatino survives uh, a little bit better than, than Garamond. This is a Swift, uh, almost no problem. And this is uh, DTL Documenta. So when the type is a little bit sturdier, these are the ones with the thicker hairlines and these are the ones with the thinner hairlines. These perform better than the ones on the, on the left side. So it is a question of uh, how thick is the thinnest stroke. Uh, this is Adobe, this is, bar uh, this is transitional. So uh, this is a Kesslen, a cellist for the small size, ITC Charter, Times New Roman. They all still do a pretty good job. Uh, when we go further down, Bodoni, uh, Walbaum, nice typeface, but it, we, here we get into trouble. How can we distinguish between N and O and D and whatever? It is too similar. Uh, here, Clarendon, also a very nice design, but when the spacing gets tight, we, get, we run into trouble when the gaps are too, too small. Uh, Excelsior is the only one which survives, and this is in the leg linotype legibility group. Uh, it's the wrong kind of design, but it still works. <laughs> so, uh, this is uh, yeah, geometrical stuff. No? This is nice, but, uh, it, but uh, you don't, uh, the, it, it is difficult to recognize this kind of G. So A centers and D centers are of importance. We cannot shorten them, shorter them to the very limit. Um, here, when we make these gaps, again, we had these discussions. This is also why, why many f typographers prefer universe above Helvetica. The designs are almost the same, but this, this spacing is not good. <laughs> it is too tight, and that is why. There's almost no difference. It's only the hook. You know, the, the Helvetica is the typeface with the hook. It's not. Yeah? <laughs> That's the rule of thumb. But it's the spacing which is troublesome. Um, again, you can you can do uh, a, a slap serif uh, when you do the spacing right, like uh, uh, Ernestine by what's what's her, what's her name again? Who did Ernestine? It's the, the little, the, the girl, Stussinger. Nina Stössinger, right. So you can, it, yeah, when you, you make the right adjustments, you make, can make a perfectly readable typeface. So it is not really only the contrast. So Rockwell does not perform. This was the difference between DIN and FFDIN. It's uh, the little niceties of 10% less. <laughs> um, and these are the best typefaces when it comes to, to small sizes. It's Frutiger and Wayfinding Sense, uh, Thesis, uh, even the Serif uh, survives, or PMN Cecilia. Uh, this, is, this is how things 
perform well in small sizes. So we have, I have some suggestions for research in the future. Um, which of these typefaces is bigger? Uh, hands up for, for the Garamond. Is, who, who thinks that Garamond is bigger than Bodoni? Hands up, there's only one. Who thinks that uh, is Bodoni is bigger than Garamond? A little bit more. Yes, but you all know what I'm trying to trick you. No? The size, the excite is the same. <laughs> so in fact, it is the same size. Um, but uh, when we look at the line spacing here, which line spacing is better? Is this line spacing better? Hands up. Uh, I see more hands. Which, who, who thinks that this line spacing is better? Absolutely nobody. So the size is the same, but the performance of the line spacing is different. Um, you see, th the reason is that, uh, that we have much more white space within the X8 here. So when, the, the, when we have more white space within the characters, we also need my, more white space between the characters. That is why this is a little bit wider. And we need bigger word space. But we, I didn't give more line feed here. So this looks bigger a little bit, but it doesn't help. It, is no, it doesn't make sense. So this whole, the whole idea of making the X height better uh, it is, it is limited. Because as soon as we have lines that are not, uh, not uh, newspaper columns of, of tight width, uh, we need, uh, when we need have longer lines, we need, no longer, we need more line space. And then it doesn't work. Uh, so this is why the, the concept of the linotype legibility group is okay, but uh, these things would perform better. This is Dwiggins against, uh, against linotype. <laughs> Dwiggins was suggesting we should go look at these things, uh, like Gerard Onger did th 50 years later. His old Dwiggins experiment, uh, experimental typefaces are here, and linotype refused them because they thought Excelsior would perform better. But uh, when we see it here, uh, that is the reason why Dwiggins was right in the end. The only thing is said, we never... Uh, <laughs> yeah? The French did it before Dwiggins. Of course, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, of course, but, but with long ascenders and descenders. Yeah. So, so, but, uh, yeah, so, so it, is, it is the counters. Uh, do they really matter? Do, is, is it really... Uh, what, what, I, 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 what, what, what's happening here? How can we, uh, why, why, why are typefaces, you, uh, you look at the counters and you for a bit, what, 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 what's in it? Uh, it is not only, it is not only uh, these things, it's not only the aperture, we always talk about opening this and it's very important, but there is more. Uh, so when we leave away the black things, then we see that the differentiation here, it is, uh, it is less different then here, As you, you, here we can see that this must have been a B, and this is an O, or a P, and this is the same. There's no differentiation, so maybe there's also a clue in that nobody ever looked into this. Nobody. Uh, you see, when we make this, so this is, this is dynamic here, humanist concept, and this is the, the modern concept, the Bodoni concept. The, here the counters do not do anything, They're, they are lazy. <laughs> and these guys tell you a little bit about what, what the characters could be. And as we know, black and white are of same importance. So uh, the eye does not distinguish about, th it doesn't see the details, but it sees uh, the differences. And that's what the eye relies on, on differentiation. So I think uh, it would be interesting to, to take a look here. Uh, so I think uh, probably dynamic counters enhance le legibility, but I don't know how much. And I would be interesting to know what it really does. Uh, uh, this is uh, not really legibility, but uh, this maybe explains why we need thicker serifs here, because this is very lively, and we need the thicker serifs to, to keep things quiet. And this is just only pointing in vertical direction. The power in the v horizontal direction is very low, so we do not read. From, from, a, from a formal perspective, we do not need the big serifs here. Maybe there's something in that as well. And uh, when it comes about serif against sense serif, there is one thing. Uh, we, we, we talked about size and which what looks bigger than the other. And we think that, that things that look a bit bigger are better. 
we, we knew about the line feeds, you know, but, but this is the difference between sense and serif. And when you, especially when you look here, you, know, you notice that the, sense that the serif typeface has bigger counters. So it, it acts as if it is bigger. So, and the same is here. Here the counters are a little bit bigger uh, than here. It's maybe, maybe it's only 10%. No, it's, it's just 10%, but 10% can mean uh, in, in, in typeface, 10% is, 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 is a huge number. So maybe these 10% uh, cause us 5% more uh, reading speed. I don't know, but it's something to, to look into. But we need research which does not compare this one to this one. Uh, we need research which compares these two typefaces. Then we would maybe learn a little bit more about what we are doing here. So that's, uh, that's the thing, I think. That's uh, the perspective. Um, that's, that's our, these are the things that I think researchers should be looking into. So I, do, I hope that future research uh, on legibility will tell us even more about contrast, serifs, counters, proportions, everything that's important to typeface design. Uh, until now, uh, we, we don't know, s n do n this is the things that's important. That's, you know, that's, that's what we are doing all the time. But research is not telling us very much about these things. So in short, typeface design, legibility, uh, influenced by many aspects, some factors can be normed, standardized, realizing effective projects will state need a lot of typographic knowledge and experience. You, you just cannot take the, the norm and say, oh, you do, do it like the finished. <laughs> it is, uh, it is uh, not really, uh, we still need uh, expert people, we still need, we sti still need a typographic education. We need education in typeface design. We cannot just say, oh, there's font for free, so no, wh what should we learn about? Eh? It's, you can pick what you like. Uh, and uh, InDesign is always hel helping a little bit. It does the hyphenation. So what, have what do we have to learn? <laughs> uh, I think uh, we still need uh, good typographic education. This is a little bit out of nonsense. Thank you. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Almost everybody stayed in the room. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> still here. That's right. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, it was a Thank pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. It was really great. Thank you okay. so much. Do we have time for questions? Yes? Of course we have. Okay. Does anybody have a question? Yes, me. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Um, yes, I'm wondering about this research you were talking about. Yeah. You are an expert, and can you tell us about how is research in, mm. in legibility and everything? Yeah. You're one of the yeah. researchers, and yeah. you're working hard <laughs> on, yeah. the, on the subject, yeah, yeah. but can you tell us? Yeah. I, I must say that I, I don't have any... Mm. idea of uh, and you saying yourself that we yes. should improve and um, yeah. there is definitely a subject here yeah. and can you tell us maybe in Europe or uh, students of mine do research <laughs> How we, what we have done what, what we are working on is uh, we we uh, we are we, we we test optical sizes so we have uh, a caption design for for six point and we test it at six point and that nine point so and what what is happening that the the six point design for caption reads faster than the nine point uh, than the six point design on a nine point size so it definitely helps uh, to do a caption design for the for the small size but it doesn't work on the bigger size because the hairlines get too thick and we t we test different uh, designs which are are very similar to each other. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have help of Professor Wendt. He is mm -hmm. still alive. He, he gave us all the statistic uh, tricks, how to calculate the difference between reading speed to do things scientifically correct. Uh, so we, we, we just started uh, this project. And we have other people like Sophie Bayer uh, in Denmark. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you do the, bo the book Reading Letters or Reading Letters. Mm -hmm. That was the joke because she is from Reading. <laughs> That's why the book is the called that way. Uh, she uh, did a lot of advice. Uh, uh, she, she f 
she, she reviewed a lot of research and said, what are, what are the weak points? What's, what should we improve? And she is now herself doing uh, the research as it more or less should be. And we have Anne Bessemans in Belgium. She does research for, for kids with, uh, with educational trouble, uh, uh, which uh, lack ADHS and things like this. And she, uh, kids that have dyslexia and does serious research about this. So not the stuff from the poor with the, with the truncated characters which look like rubbish from Holland. That's uh, not every Dutch designer is good. No, they are not. <laughs> so this, this, these dyslexia fonts are, are horrible and it uh, only helps if in some cases very few people. Mm -hmm. But Anne Bessemans is doing serious research mm -hmm. on and this. So there are people doing good things and in Europe. And the yeah. step after, how can it be applied? Or what are the companies or how can those people work? And um, how, can it, how can it go and meet uh, people, both, readers yeah. and everything, you know, the, mm -hmm. the step afterwards? Yeah. The, the research by Anne Bessemans and by Sophie Bayer is fi partly financed and supervised by people from Microsoft. Uh, uh -huh. This was the guy what, which tell, told us about the different models of, uh, of reading. The, 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 the fast and intuitive reading against the slow and deliberate reading. Mm -hmm. This is from Kevin Larson. He is a scientist which uh, knows about the importance of talking to designers and look into uh, typeface design and not just saying, well, uh, well we, uh, we have Arial, so what the heck. So he is, he is very serious and uh, he also puts money in this. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, uh, we, we just, I had just uh, two students, one from Hamburg and one from Kiel, which did this legibility project. Uh, they finished the first testing stage and now uh, they, they both want to do a PhD on this uh -huh. and we are looking for money. So when you know but somebody <laughs> is really a so few, <laughs> then uh, you can tell me, then uh, I give the money to them and then they do the research, yeah. So that this is a very, very early stage, but the outcomes of the tests are, are very promising. Mm -hmm. and Interesting. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things that we do uh, because we think that it is right, uh, I think we're on the right way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So uh, I think that shows the importance of uh, courses like uh, Jean-Francois is uh, doing here Useful. and uh, the team of uh, Type Paris. Your, your sci science will prove that you do the right thing. <laughs> and then it will be easier for us to, to uh, make uh, clear that, uh, that typography and typeface design will, uh, is important. It's important to, to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So. What about your thesis? Huh? My thesis? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. So <laughs> never, never ask somebody who, <laughs> who does a thesis when he will it be It has finished. to end one yeah, day. Yeah, it has to end one day. <laughs> I, am, I am researching about the history of, of geometric constructed typefaces, but then only the sen concentrate on the sans serif, and I will concentrate on the history in Germany because... What I'm thinking about uh, is yeah. publishing afterwards. Yes, of that's course. That's uh, when I finish, question. then I will publish. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But okay. it's, uh, there is a lot of interesting S things to do. Soon, let's yes, say. Yes, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Do you have questions? Yes. Um, in the US, we have Highway Gothic and then Clearview, right? Clearview, yeah. Clearview is the yep. update. I just wonder if you had an opinion on either of those yeah. typefaces. I think Clearview is the better typeface. It is. Uh, it is sometimes it is a little bit strange the design, it, uh, um, but uh, I think the overall performance uh, is better. But we, we have this strange uh, discussion that uh, that they say, well, okay, there is a difference in reading speed for te three percent or five percent or ten percent, but uh, then sh th but at what costs? It costs us the state has to finance all these signs and, this and, and to neoliberalism neo tell us that the state should not play, play a big role and they shouldn't be too much uh, money from the, uh, from the poor taxpayers. And, and that is, it is financial arguments yeah. and it is uh, capitals against lowercase and, and they don't, yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, so clearly it, it, is, it is not only highway gothic against 
uh, against Clearview. It is also capitals against lowercase. And, and you have, in, in France, you have the similar problem. The road signage in, in France is capital letters. And every Frenchman I think the battery is low, yes. <laughs> you know the, the difference between uh, foreground and background? You know, the, you know um, when my voice is low, then you cannot hear me. So when the typeface is not black enough and the lights are off, you will not see the typeface. It's the same. It's all about contrast. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's capitals against lowercase also. And that's why the discussion is difficult. That's, um, yeah. OK, anything? Any more questions? Ah, Jean-François, I think you need to... My, my, this, this battery is... Uh, is it working? It's working. Ah, you yes, found yes. Okay. Yeah, um, yep. <laughs> you have been asked to design a, uh, a typeface based on the typeface you hate the most. Yes. Or <laughs> uh, yep. you are able to s survive on what, uh, why you accept, accepted to do that. Um, I was on, on, uh, on, I will say, yeah. uh, with this question, mm -hmm. do you will recommend anyone who learned time design to do the same <laughs> or not? Ah, it depends on uh, how much money you want to make. <laughs> yeah, it, it, this was just uh, accidental. Uh, I was unemployed uh, or, or almost unemployed. Eric Spiekerman knew that the company where I was working was going bankrupt. And he, Eric Spiekerman was always looking for, for young design. I was younger than yo for young designers, which, uh, which are, are willing to take challenges and, and do things they are, they are, that the others don't like to do. Ne? So um, uh, he, he said uh, at Etapai San Francisco 1994, for I have some projects in my drawer. Uh, when you have time, then you come by and uh, uh, then we look at it. And then I, th I was thinking, oh, maybe I can do something like Meta Black Italic or Meta Serif or something like this interesting project. And then he opened the drawer and he gave me DIN. <laughs> and until then, DIN was considered as, as the evil thing. Uh, you ask people like Boton, you ask Hermann Zapf, you ask Ed Bengat, you ask Frutiger, you ask anyone. They will all, they all, all these people, you can ask Gerrit Noordzei, uh, all these people uh, keep telling me, din, din is bad, it is made by engineers, they don't, they don't know what they're doing, they're, they're, they're making uh, letters of, with compass and rulers, nothing more stupid than this, so how can it, how can it be a good typeface, it is wrong. <laughs> it should be thrown away. <laughs> it should be whatever you do with it. <laughs> but uh, so, so I was, uh, I was a little bit uh, okay. This, huh? <laughs> and then he said to me, "Well, Albert, uh, when you want to be uh, to to make money, you do this, <laughs> because this is what what designers like to have. That it was the days of Neville Brody." It was almost the day for Dave, David Carson. People didn't want, designers like you and me, uh, they didn't want to have the slick typefaces anymore. It should be a little bit ugly, a little bit kaput, a little bit disturbed. Uh, you had Jeffrey, Jeffrey Keady who digitized typefaces from, from, uh, from, uh, from the street. Uh, and and th this was get going grunge typefaces, which was popular. And he was thinking that when we take, take, take DIN and improve it just a little bit and do the five weights, then you have something which, which designers will, will like. And it was true. Everybody wanted to have it. It is, it is crazy. It is still uh, a bestseller. It is still the, from the Font Shop Library. It is still number one. So it, he had uh, this, this clue. And I was just, I just jumped in by accident. So it could have, uh, maybe somebody else could have done it also. The, the only thing is that, that what, what, I th what, I, what I learned in the years before is that uh, we we, I worked at companies that bought typefaces and made them suitable for systems and, and digitized them. And sometimes characters are missing and uh, sometimes you had to fix the spacing but because nobody did spacing. Uh, so you learn to look into things and you learn to respect them. And that is why I think that that DIN turned is into something uh, good. 
because when you exaggerate it, then you will get something like uh, ITC conduit. Maybe you know it. It is also it's the same idea. Take a signage typeface and exaggerate the funny things. And it is not as popular as DIN because it is too strange. It is very good for specific projects, but only for things that are really specific. There are typefaces for niches. And when you do something for the mainstream, it's you will have more success. So it, it, it's a little bit a sad story. No? When you behave and do everything the right way, you, you will make money. And when you do it to, to with all your fantasy and all your effort in something, you may, maybe it, it works just for a short time. Until in 30 years, somebody revives it. Oh, let's take the old type. But then you are maybe uh, already pensionate, you know? <laughs> and the young designers steal your things. <laughs> yeah. So I was just lucky. Another question? No? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Hmm? <laughs> huh? No. Is now. The what? <laughs> okay. Ask don't the worry. Don't worry. Uh, uh, in, in the talk, I heard uh, Gary Leonidas who was speaking about the future of legibility. Maybe ah, and yeah. he was thinking about the the um, the cell phones, and you see, and so little screens, very little, and uh, especially in width, you see, mm -hmm. to condense. And it was. He was supposing uh, that uh, maybe in the, f in the future we have to read more and more condensed character. And do you, what do you think about that condensed design? Maybe it will, it will work or not, or it's not a problem for uh -huh. you, actually. Wh why should we be reading more condensed characters? Because of, the, because of the cell phones and the... The, see, the, the small the, screens. The small screens, you see. Yeah, um, and I like, don't know. Uh, like the newspaper column, yeah. you see. You have yeah. I'm, I'm not so sure. No, it was just an no. a thinking. Uh, yeah, uh, that people, people have been talking about this for one, 100 years. Mm -hmm. yeah? All, all, the, all, the, all the, the, the things that every, every new newspaper times, newspaper mm. uh, typeface claims that it is a little bit more condensed than the others. Uh, it is. It is. Has done. It has been done so often, and I, I. I don't see that that everything is getting more condensed. In the last 100 mm. years, no? mm -hmm. because when you when you make it more condensed, uh, yeah. There, there is also there is there is, uh, there is a maximum number. Uh, what what the eye tries to do is to do the ideal jump. And every time it fixates, fixates, it needs a certain amount of characters. And when it is too small, then you get problems with the threshold value. And when it's too big, it is not enough characters. So then the jumps get shorter. So there is, an, there is some kind of efficiency in this. So I think the eye does not really allow us to, to make condensed text typefaces that are, much, are more condensed th that we are used to. And th th there is this rule of thumb that when you do, uh, when you do a bigger size, 17% bigger size is 6% gain in reading speed. Uh, we also have this with, with condensed. When you do a condensed a universe at 80%, you will only lose 10% of reading speed. Yeah, but you lose 10%. No? In telephone directories, this was the discussion. We can save 20% money, and the reader only loses 10% of reading speed. No? I, 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 I'm not convinced. So, And I think that, and you see Samsung, eh? the screens get bigger. <laughs> the iPhone is also l m much bigger than, than the iPhone 4. We need bigger hands. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah? Was it the last question? Yes? Thank you very so, much. Yeah.
Bye, everyone. Thanks for following us. Bye-bye.